I'm from the federal government, and I'm here to help you all today. <laughs> and uh, it's an honor for me to be here. You're probably wondering what in the world your leadership team was smoking when they asked somebody from my line of work to come here and speak. But a couple years ago, uh, as Kevin told you, I had the great honor of getting command of a destroyer in the Navy. And at the time, we weren't quite the worst ship in the Pacific Fleet, but we were probably third or fourth from the bottom. We had uh, one of the highest accident rates of any ship in the Navy. The quarter before I took command of the ship, our retention rate was 8%, meaning we were retaining 8% of the sailors eligible to re-enlist. And when you think of the military, you may think, oh, you can order your people around. And you know what? I can, but I can't order them to stay. And my sailors are volunteers, just like your customers are volunteers. And I realized I'm going to have to give them a reason why they should want to stay why they should want to come to work every day and be passionate and motivated about what they, about what they signed up for. And uh, so I take command of the ship and I'm, I'm thinking about all the things I can't influence. I don't get to choose my missions. I don't get to choose the people I work with. I can't change out anybody on the ship. I've got to play the same hand that's already there. And I have zero input into the budget that's given to carry out our mission. And I'm thinking, this is it. It's the end of the line for me. I'm never getting promoted again. I'm not smart enough to turn this ship around. I graduated in the top 80% of my class at the Naval Academy. <laughs> and one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to stop obsessing over all the things I can't influence. And instead, I'm going to spend my days obsessing over the things that I can. And I realized the one variable that I can influence was the crew, to get them to start working together better as a team. The way a ship is organized, we have five departments on the ship, and historically they're operated as independent silos, and we weren't supporting each other properly. A lot of times we were pointing fingers at each other. And so what I decided to do was to figure out a way to better integrate the five departments on the ship and get the crew to understand it's in our own best interest to work together better as a team. It doesn't pay to be near the bottom of our industry. And what I want us to do is to put ourselves in a position to control our own destiny so that if we ever get called into combat, you know, we're going to be safe. And so what happened by focusing only on my crew, communicating to them where we're headed and why it's in their own best interest, giving them the training necessary to be successful. But at the end of the day, I also listened to them. I interviewed every sailor on the ship, all 310 of them. And I tried to treat them with respect and dignity and get them to understand, you know, we're all in this together. And what happened was, in 15 months, the same crew that was performing near the bottom was awarded the Spokane Trophy. It was an award started in 1908 by President Theodore Roosevelt, given annually to the best ship in the Pacific Fleet. In years three and four after I left the ship, Benfold won the award for best ship in the entire U.S. Navy. I used to say to them, it's your ship. You, know, you own this ship just as much as I do. If you see something that needs to be done, step up to the plate. Take action. I'm going to support you 100% of the time. Hope, I told them I hope you're perfect. But you know what? I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. It's a lifelong journey. But after everything we do in this ship, everybody involved is going to get together and we're going to critique it. It's an idea I lifted from the U.S. Army called the After Action Review. After every event, after every process, everybody involved would gather around my chair on the bridge wing, and they weren't members of a department. It was members of one team. And we would talk about what it was we were trying to do, what the conditions were at the time, what worked, what didn't work, what would we do differently or better next time we see the same situation. And on Benfold, the ground rules were you check your ego at the door, there's no retribution for what gets said, and anybody in the process could respectfully challenge anybody else. The lowest ranking seaman could challenge the captain. And if they were right, if I was doing things that caused them to do needless additional work, I would change. If they were wrong, it meant there was something that they didn't understand. And it allowed me to have a coachable moment that says, hey, here's the big picture. Here's us down here. And here's how you contribute to the success of the overall mission.
I wanted every sailor on that ship to feel like they were responsible for the successful outcome on that ship, because they were. I couldn't do it on my own. We made our share of mistakes on that ship, but we were never made the same mistake twice, and we were constantly challenging every process, every assumption to do things just a little bit better. And the thing that turned our ship around was changing that mindset and getting people to understand, you know, it's in our own best interest that we control our own destiny. So one of the things I learned, the main lesson I learned when I was writing It's Your Ship, I'm no different than anybody in this room. All of us are captains of our own ship. You know, we're all part of a great team, a, a great organization. Every once in a while, spend some time thinking about what your own leadership story is. And think about the things that have caused you to be the success that you are today. And then ask yourself, what do we need to do to continue to up our game so that we can continue to control our own destiny? That's what's at stake today. Nobody can take their future for granted. We've got to go out and fight and earn it each and every day and not take anything for granted.